So let's get into how we work with this. So we've talked a lot about how the mind works. So how do we work with our minds? Uh, and this doesn't just apply to eating, this applies to any habit. Uh, and for those of you that don't struggle with, with eating yourself, if you're working with students or clients or teaching, you can actually apply this process to another habit and develop that wisdom from your own experience there. And then say, you know, use the parallel as a way to help folks with the eating piece. So the first step, and I'm going to go, I'll just lay these out and then we're going to go through these specifically. Uh, the first step is we've got to be aware of what's happening. If we're not aware, we can't work with it. In the second step, this is really straight from the suttas, you know, exploring the results of the behavior, um, exploring gratification to its end, basically asking questions like, what do I get from this? Again, we'll get into this. And then the third step is stepping out of these habit loops. And I'm using some examples of mindfulness practices. And I'll tell you why specifically mindfulness practices as compared to other uh, things and why these might be uniquely advantageous. So just to give you a sense of this, this first step, it's probably the easiest step. I uh, hear somebody in our you Right Now program who is writing her journal. She said, I understand why I go to food to avoid or cover up or distract from uncomfortable feelings such as anger, sadness, or restlessness. Who wants to feel those things? Trigger, uncomfortable feeling. Behavior, eat something that temporarily diminishes the feeling. Reward, still have to deal with the unpleasant feelings plus the sugar headache. I can clearly see how I got caught in this habit loop trying to escape difficult feelings of food, but that ultimately it doesn't work. Okay, so there's a lot here, but the main thing I wanna focus on is here's somebody mapping out her habit loop around eating, trigger, behavior, and reward or the, or the result. So this, the first um, breakout we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you pair up uh, for a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna have you um, with your partner, I'm gonna have each of you map out a habit loop, ideally one around eating, habitual eating. But if you don't have one, I'm yet to meet somebody that doesn't have any habits. Um, so you can map it out around another habit and ideally map it around uh, an unhelpful habit. So we all have tons of habits that are helpful. You know, imagine having to relearn everything every day, uh, we'd be exhausted by breakfast. So in general habits, 95% of behavior is habitual and probably about 90% of that is helpful. You know, it's great that I don't have to relearn how to tie my shoes every day or how to walk or how to make breakfast. So map out, you know, what's the trigger, what's the behavior, what's the result. So pick that. Um, and, you know, so one person will map it out what the other person is listening. The other person will map one out uh, and then, um, just make sure that it's this process is really, really clear in terms of what's the trigger, what's the behavior, what's the result. So once you've mapped that out, um, you'll have a, just a few minutes to just kind of discuss that concept um, between the two of you. And then we'll come back and, and share what uh, our learnings with the group.